Try this. This is very nice. Good boy. Right. As I take this, <laughs> I, w I want to tell you guys something. Yeah. Just the other day, I hope I don't mess this up. Just the other day, basically, um, got an invite for a party. And a friend of mine at work, looking forward to it now. How close were you with him? I mean, I've known him for four years since I've been in the, the company. And we didn't obviously like hit it off at once. It took time gradually and what have you. Depart we moved yeah, from shift from You see him or you see your own family probably if you're at work together. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. So what's the party for, a birthday or Christmas? Um, or it's a get together. Um, he's doing just a thing. He likes to do that. And um, Where's he from, sorry? Where's he from? He's from here. He's uh, English. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So um, obviously looking forward to it now and the other team is invited as well. All my other colleagues, oh, you know, they're invited. Every, everything's going to be hunky dory. Everybody's now. Ta yeah, yeah, kill that. Uh, that, that. That looks nice. You don't take um, that off. You don't peel off. Why? You, you eat that. You eat this? Yes. Stop kind of out. <laughs> no, that's fine. Go you know what? I'm, I'm, can I take a bite as well? Yeah, yeah, go been, on. No, no, listen. So basically, the, I, <laughs> the problem paper. is. Mm. Um, this is coconut paper. It is. <laughs> that is amazing. That really is. You better save some for me. Um, so. So what happened was everybody was talking about it. You know, the hype is there. You know, everybody's hyped up, and I'm I'm over listening. It's not. It doesn't directly involve me. This conversation that's taking place. So it's like to my to my left, and they're like, "Who's bringing the prosecco?" And the who? The who? Prosecco? You know, uh, alcohol. Oh, basically. Okay. I literally thought you meant something that you spread on the bread or something. No, no, no. <laughs> what I'm just basically trying to say is that, what do I do now? Because something I was looking forward to, mm. now my sort of identity and who I am and my upbringing and you know the, the, the principles that I follow the faith that I follow doesn't really allow me to be sitting at a, a place where there's like a pint right next to me could be spilled on me could be you know anything's going on at that time and forget it forget, forget about the intoxicants Right, there's gonna be obviously intoxicants because you can see those little tiny, uh, whatever the helium little capsules that are, you know, uh, people use and stuff. And wow. I haven't, I haven't used it, but um, <laughs> the world has upgraded. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it definitely has. Helium capsule? Do they use that for change the voice? Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. No. Let's just say, sure, why not? So it's for a high. Call it, call it's it for then. a high, and it's it's an intoxicant. That's that's what it is. Oh, okay. So um, I mean, these are just a couple of things that you know came into my head, and I'm like. Let's just take it from the outset. What the heck You're do I do going, now? Right? I don't know why I asked Shouldn't you. I go? Uh, what the hell should I do? Where do I go? Do I not go? I think why it's very not? clear. Why not? Because they're kind of expecting me to be there. I think. But Bro, I think you have to define yourself in terms of uh, if they're expecting you to be there, then I think there's a fundamental flaw. They should know that you are a Muslim. and, and Should and they you, know? You shouldn't. Should they? Why shouldn't they? Should they expect me to no, go? No, I didn't say shouldn't. I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't say they shouldn't. I'm saying should they know he's a Muslim? Yeah. Is it... <clears throat> is it the fact that he's a Muslim is the reason why they would keep away from inviting him? Or is it his principles rather? Bro, but Because you can be a non-Muslim and not drink and not party. I you don't understand. have to That's be a, a Muslim. Point. Yeah, that is a point. I have so many colleagues, they just don't show up to anything because they just just not their scene. Yeah, but and are they, they labeled that? We all respect that. Are yeah, they labeled as antisocial then? Are they? No, they're not. They're actually very, very bubbly, and they're very likable yes. in I the think office you can because talk about they've, it in a case by case they've, scenario. They've, you but know, for you, you are a Muslim, and uh, you are right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, and there are shirt, no, <laughs> rules and uh, regulations and legislations that you have to adhere to. Uh, so, what's the problem? In my opinion, what's the problem with working, for example, in an English company or British company? And you know they like to they have this in their culture. After work, we go out to the pub for a pint. Absolutely. Yeah, they yeah. have that in their yeah. culture. Oh yeah. Oh, you have a work lunch. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, work say, lunch, listen, I'm lunch. sorry, I can't go. Come on, just what? I'm sorry, my religion doesn't permit me to. I find from my per personal experiences, most people respect that. They're like, okay, man. they do. But the way I see it, since you've given them your word, I'm not saying go. 
Well, I'm saying you can, you can do something else. You can last minute back out of it. I'm not saying that you come across as a... As a Why? As a Why should you do that? On. And hold on, because this time he's kind of, he's given them his word. He said, yeah, I'll come. I assume you said, yeah, I'll, I'll come with you guys. You, then, you've known the guy for four years. You're quite close to him. Yes, but he's he should not, be able to understand that the reason why you're not going. He will. That's it then. But I'm also the affiliated rest, yeah. with uh, quite other people. I mean, he's not the only friend I have. He's the one who's kind of organizing it. I understand. And he's invited me because wh of the fact. Why? That why should you feel under pressure uh, to go to this party? I do though, because I feel like I'll be an outcast if I don't. Yes. And he's been in the company for four years. I understand, said, but let me ask you a question: What's time. what's so wrong with being an outcast sometimes? Everything when, with when, it. When, Just when, the when, word when, itself when, has a negative connotation to brother, it. Brother, when 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 you when you believe in something, you have to stand by your principles, okay. true or not. But being yes. sharp is so. I disagree no, no, with two things. No right? I disagree. Sharp, I honest. disagree that I would be honest, say. Don't say. I'm not last minute. I'm going to pull be out. Honest, be honest. But I there mean, are Muslims as well. Maybe in the company. Maybe not in the company. But I've been in a situation where they would tell me, oh, but he's going, he's a Muslim. What do I oh, tell him? Man. Oh, he's a fake Muslim. No, no, you don't tell me he's a fake Muslim. You There's two points. Never talk about other people. I think you There's should always define yourself. You, you you define yourself. But if you say, because I'm a Muslim, I cannot yeah. sit on a table where they are drinking alcohol, they were like, What's well, the problem with that? No, I understand that. What's the problem from our side? We can understand it. You know, maybe it will spill, maybe it gives a bad you know, picture that this guy is sitting on a table where there's alcohol being served. It's just haram. I can't do it. If I tell them, I can't be at this place, sorry, you know, my religion prohibits me from going to this restaurant because you're going to be serving alcohol, but, well. But the thing is, I, I, I would approach it differently. I'm not saying you're wrong or you're wrong. Or how would you approach it? Yeah, how would you do it? I think, I think, number one, saying I'm Muslim, I'm not going, I would, personally, I wouldn't approach it this way. Second of all, I would not back out last minute because if you are a Muslim, you would stick to your word. You would keep your promises. In the Quran, it talks about Uhud, it talks about promises. You need to keep Yeah, them. but there, there's, there's uh -huh. levels of so, things, Habib. You no, can't keep your second. promise if you're going to do one something second. haram. No, but in, initially, if you have, of course, m we're not young, right? We should have that particular maturity. Speak for yourself. Where, we understand, <laughs> <laughs> where we understand the sort of environments we may be uh, surrounded by. So we would know how to approach it. But obviously, it comes with experience. Personally, I don't think saying I'm not going to go because there's alcohol is the best way. I think saying I don't want to go because I don't like to be associated with this environment may be the better approach. Because I don't have a problem with my colleagues. So we don't like all I don't have a problem with going out to a work lunch with them as long as there's no alcohol. As you long know as what? I'm in total agreeing, agreeance with what you're saying. The way that but well, Ali was saying that, that but but you were being too abrupt. I no, think no, I, I, it's just the approach. Maybe the way I'm speaking, but I just want to say saying. a image about us. I, I, They're I, gonna get scared if I'm saying I'm Muslim. Yeah. Oh, no, no, the, the first thing that, that's gonna come to their head is Abu Bakr al Baghdadi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I say ISIS. something? No, no, no. Look. At the end of the day, we're all very well-mannered gentlemen. I'm sure Ali Hassan is not going to go say, I'm Muslim, like that. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, this is not a... The word <laughs> Muslim can, can cause friction. That's what I'm saying. If you're at work, but bro, that's, that's you're one there thing more to address. Than, you, than you are at I know, home. but brother, listen, what you just said, I it's accept it. But the fact that if I say the word Muslim causes friction, then we need to break this down because that's a huge issue. That word should not cause friction. It shouldn't, but... Especially to a friend. Let me tell no, you something. No, the word Muslim shouldn't. Yeah, right. I don't know. I agree that... No, no, no. Don't tell me uh, reality. It's, there are it's things that we need one. to it's address. He's a more important been issues. Four years. Surely they must know you're a Muslim, right? Yeah. But how did they come about knowing yeah, you're a Muslim? Exactly. That's my question. Uh, but before just that, briefly. If they know you're a Muslim, and they know you're, you're quite serious about your religion, from, from what, 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 what I would think is that they shouldn't think it's normal to invite you. To Thank a you. place with, but you uh, need to have. I can, I can defend my friend you, here. And you need say, to have a gradual momentum. Let's let's see how he defends until his you got to One second, this, you get to this comfortable point where they just don't invite you anymore. Without them having friction with you, without them having any sort of conflict. I know how this sort of, you know, shindig <laughs> has come about, right? Okay. <laughs> Love your words. Don't you know you? that. I need um, to start taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> Put that on your phone, shindig. He's invited everyone of course he's gonna invite me he's just organizing it it's not for me i'm not gonna be the center of attention i'm not gonna be the keynote speaker in that occasion i am another invitee i do want to be there for him i do want to go because it's you know yeah. his thing he's organized 
but the, the way I would defend him, because yes, he knows me. He knows I'm Muslim. And you ask me, how do they know throughout yeah. these years yes. or months or whoever yes. I've you know, interacted with? Explicitly, I've sometimes told them in conversations okay. Okay. because it's been brought up. And sometimes just by looking at me, and um, some know that I go and attend and go to the prayer room from time to time. It's kind of a given. Okay. It's kind of a given. So yeah, both angles. You know what the problem is? The problem is some of the people that Ali referred to, this Ali, uh, where he says there are some Muslims, they'll tell him, let's go to the pub. They're like, okay, cool, no problem. Yeah, but he goes. So, so, yeah. so most yeah. people have I actually the, had that problem. The, the, yeah. the way they, they look at you, they're like, okay, why does this guy go? Why does this guy go? So, number one, you yeah. define yourself. Number two, this issue is a small issue at the end of the day. Ali Hassan, you make the right decision, I'm sure it is. But it opens up a discussion to a wider issue that we have, to be honest, a huge issue that we have, which is how to integrate into the society, identity crisis in youth. I mean, you're a identity good, crisis, mature yeah. gentleman uh, like the rest of us here, so we know how to act. But Let's take it a step back and say if we were in school, all right, where we're immature, and we go into positions where there's one Muslim in a full English uh, school somewhere uh, in the south of England, in a little village, you know what I mean, where they've never seen a Muslim before, mm -hmm. and he's just coming to this country. You know, it's, 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 it's a scary time to be a little kid. You want to be with the class, you want to be with your friends. And this is where the confusion comes, though. Not only confusion, this is where you're going to lead... You're, you're that's gonna, where it starts. It's, it's, it's going to lead you to doing something, <laughs> perhaps, something? that's uh, against what you believe or what you yeah. practice at home. If that grows with you, when you reach your position, you're going to be like the gentleman that Ali referred to. You want to go to Bob? Yeah, sure. Yeah. That needs to be nipped in the bud. Ali, that needs to let me tell you something that you already know, and I think you guys may already know already, but I'll just touch on Is it, it again. something? <laughs> 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 no, so um, my father's Iraqi. Okay. My mom's Lebanese. Okay. I was born in Syria. What? <laughs> and I was raised in Syria okay. up until a certain age. Okay. And I came to the UK, right. and I'm, you know, I literally just woke up or saw life in the UK wow. at the age of 12. You know, that's when you start embracing things. How could you stop yourself from being confused? This is the thing. Th I was so confused because I'm at home and, you know, I come from a particular family. I have to have, so I have certain rituals that I'm used to. I have, yeah. you know, from a young age, we're used to that. I grew up around the shrine of Sayyidah Zainab, sallallahu alayhi alayha. I grew up around these environments. I grew up in a Husseiniyah, in a mosque, you know? But then I come here and the only environment where I can, or the only place I can practice all these things comfortably and be myself is home. Yeah. But how much of my time do I spend at home and how much of my time do I spend at school? Sure. And then from then on, you know, the ball rolled. I, I went to college, I went to uni, I'm at work during this period. How do I, you know, how do I act? Who am I? Yeah. That question always sparked to mind. At the end of the day, there are things that, personally I speak for myself, that we don't reflect on. In the Qur'an, ayah 13 of Surah Al-Ahzab, it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha, wa ja'annakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu, inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum. Oh, by the way, my translation is so bad, as you know, I can barely speak English. <laughs> um, oh people, we have created you from uh, male and female and we also have created you as tribes and different tribes in order for you to get to know one another. The most, now akramakum and Allah atqakum is it the most generous but I don't yeah. think the word generous is right. I think pious, Yeah, the, the, you the, reach piety. The, the closest to Allah uh, is those who are the most pious. You can always search it up. Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah 13. But what I like to say, <laughs> Sayyidina, that's, let a, me just that's a beautiful Sorry. Ayah. Yeah? Let me, just, let me just finish off. Carry on your point. Um, and when I think of that, I think, all right, so I can interact with people from different religions. I can interact with people from different races. But then I come with, you know, I come into this society with a tribal identity. I come from this society with a race identity. I come into this society with a religious identity. I come into this society with a national identity. I mean, I've got a British passport. I've written a contract 
with the government, with the queen, <laughs> and I said, you know what, I'll follow your rules, and I have rights in return, right? That, yeah, essentially, I, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> but, then, but then at the I end hope. of the day, <laughs> I'm Muslim. No, but can I, can what do I do, what do I do I with certain that. aspects, we you know, with the rights I have, yeah. you know, I can have certain rights in this sense, but yeah. Let me just I would be that. abusing certain rights in terms of my... Give me Islamic. an example of that. That is pretty amazing. That. No, what, no, second, that's no, amazing actually, what he said, but I know, just, I want to hear what last point, I want to hear an example. In terms of abusing? Yeah, so, so why I'm allowed, I be basically, British and Muslim? Just, no. Yeah. no, I didn't say you can't be British so what, and Muslim. So you be abusing? No, 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 no. Just no, no. give me that point, because I didn't understand. When I say what I can you? be following, I, can, I, I have rights, yeah. these rights, I can use them to, to the full extent in my British rights. But then some of these rights are conflicting with my like, like religious right, rights. Like. For example, yep. I'm allowed to go to a club. It's a choice. It's a choice, right? Not but forced. I have a right to live it, right? Yeah. I have a right to live that life. I have a right to go to, um, I don't know, to... Okay. Okay. To walk into food and wine and buy alcohol. Okay. For example, yeah. but then when I, come down, when I come down to looking at it from with my religious identity, I think, all right, well, this restricts me, but Going back to my school days and the amount of time I spend with my family and the amount of time I spend with the society that doesn't know any, about any of my rituals, how do I treat this? How do I approach it? So, you know, let me that was you. my problem. Let and this is, I think, this. similar to what we go through in every... Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I know day. Ali wants to say uh, something. I just, just sorry, I took so much time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You took a lot of time to That's enough now. Thank you for coming. Get out of here. Yeah. Go uh, integrate. Yeah, go integrate, exactly. Wait, let's prepare him before... Let him I just want to see. integrate this uh, biscuit. Just yeah, yeah. Good man. Uh, just a few points. Uh, we have the right to do a lot of things, mm. yes. but... The first thing I want to tell you, brother, is we define ourselves. You have to define yourself, I have to define myself. Which is a task in itself. Uh, it is a task, Very but this, hard. Is, this, is, this is one of the most important things. At the end of the day, life is not easy. These are some of the things that we have to do. Mm. Going back to the ayah that you uh, mentioned, which is a beautiful ayah, from what I understood of the ayah and how I'd like to use it uh, in my life, and going back to your story, your mom's Lebanese, your father's uh, Iraqi, all of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, look, uh, you're going to be born into different clans and tribes. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be from all different aspects of life. You're going to, from all walks of life. But those who are closest to Allah are the most pious. Which means what? You can be from anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can come from any country. You can come from any family. Mm -hmm. But the goal is one. And the way you are defined is one. Either you're good or bad. So you can be black, white fat, skinny, whatever, you know what I mean? Whatever you are from, Pakistani, Iraqi, English, okay. at the end of the day, this is how you're going to be defined. Are you close to Allah or are you not? If you're close to Allah, inshallah, you're succeeding. If you're not, he's not going to look at you and say, you know what? Your dad used to sell shoes, I don't like you. Your dad was, uh, you know, the owner of Selfridges, I like you. Do you, you know what I'm saying? No, but I don't think the goal and it, and it is goes. for me to say what Ali, no, whether Ali is close to Allah it, it, or not. I don't no, no, care it's, it's if he is or not. Goal. It's his goal. It's my goal with myself. Yeah, but I feel like Imam we're, Ali we're Ali like segregating Imam people Ali. depending no, no, no. on how close Imam, they are no, no, to Allah. No, 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 brother. Imam Ali salam says that there are two people, right? They're either your brothers in faith or your equals in humanity, right? Yes, I agree. So. The fact of the matter is this, I, I was born in, L in London, okay, uh, raised in London, lived my whole life in London. I don't look at, I don't know what that means because <laughs> if you go to Hackney or Bethnal Green, you see people dressed in all sorts, you know what I mean, the hipster areas. If you go to South London, you get people dressed in all sorts. Everywhere in London, someone dresses differently. The beautiful thing about this cosmopolitan city is you can be whoever you want mm. and you can literally be whoever you want word. because everyone is accepted. What you need to do is define yourself, stick to your principles and be true to it, and you would be surprised how people accept you. Look, everyone is accepted in London. Let's speak specific no. in London. That's brother, one of the brother, legislative... I'm, on the day of Act gay pride, on the day of gay pride, go to Regent Street and see what people are doing and tell me that not everyone is accepted in London. Everyone's accepted in London. All walks of life, no matter where you're from, all right? And there are rules and regulations in this country that don't let you discriminate yeah. against people. It's a great people. area. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's a great not about area. a great area. Yeah. I mean, the I'm, I'm yeah, a the rules are one thing, but following the rules is something else. Brother, I'm a Muslim. I believe in these things. People should be able to respect that like I respect anyone else's okay. uh, 
Ali was I mean, wanted to wait to say something. I, I want to hear it. Now, the verse you mentioned yes. in the Quran, mm. I think um, from what I understand, it says, Ta'arafu, get to know each other. It doesn't mean integrate Beautiful. into That's it. That's exactly what I was saying. It doesn't thinking. mean follow it. Yes. Get to know each other, get oh, okay. to know the culture. How do you get to know each other? How do you get to know each other? I didn't, I didn't say embrace no, what they... Yourself, what I'll, give you an you example. That, no. I'll give you an example now. The example that you had at work, when I first joined my first job here in the UK about 10 years ago... Um, you look quite young, bro. Uh, don't I'm, don't I'm, reveal I'm, that. I think I'm older than all of you. You don't look it. In St. Albans, there's, there's not a lot of foreigners there. No, there isn't. There's a beautiful area. Very beautiful area. And uh, the company I worked with, all British, all white. The day one I started, I told them, listen, I have to pray. That we don't have a prayer area. From day one. From day one. From I have to pray. Because I thought, you know what, if I tell them from day why one. Why brave? What's the worst that can happen? It's brave. What's what's gonna gonna kill I'll, go you? I'll go back and tell what's you why. And, carry and, on. and, and Burn actually, you to the stake. <laughs> actually, my boss told uh, me from I'll, day I'll one. Make sure like, I come back to this point. He told me, does it, do you have to wear something weird? Because he thought, this guy's going to be dressing up. You know, <laughs> Did he say know? weird? He's like, do you, do you have to wear something weird? I said, That means no. he was comfortable with you. That exactly. means he was trying to be friendly like, with you. That's how are you going to make noises? So I told him, no, no, not really, not as far as I'm aware of. Yes. So I brought my prayer mat and every day during lunch break, I put it in the middle of the office, put my prayer mat, my turban, and I, I pray. I respect that, mashallah. And they, no, no, it's, it's normal. After a while, after a couple of years, it became so normal. They're like, Ali, isn't it time for your aerobics? Wow. I mean, literally, <laughs> it was like that. It's like, That's Ali, isn't it time for your aerobics? And they're like, Ali, do, do, you, piece of fun. That's well, Ali fun. do your thing so we can go and have lunch. That's, That's very nice. good. You get me? You're very fortunate. I am fortunate. But very the thing fortunate. is, no, but he defined himself. Because I yes. did that from day one, yeah. going but forward, Christmas. Not everyone will have the same experience. You all had Christmas Jews. Everyone have, has them, right? In any company. What you is work? it? Christmas Jew. You go out for Christmas, oh, yeah, yeah. you have your dinner. Yeah. And they know from day one, because I told them I pray, they know, okay, this guy, he's probably not going to drink. So Ali, okay for a Greek restaurant, you know, but they're gonna serve alcohol. So what they do? Or is, we go is, to a Turkish is, is place. They try to adhere to your. Uh, they ask my opinion. Like that's beautiful. Because it's a very, know. very fortunate experience. Now I didn't. I had some to. people don't have the same sort of. And I don't mean to cut you out. Yeah. I'm sorry. What I mean is. I'm not, similar, I was lucky. In similar, that similar, Ali, I'm similar share example. This with you. Yeah. Similar <laughs> example. Very good stuff. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, I worked outside London, so this is London. I worked in London for five years or four or five years and then I moved out I never ever thought about you know um, my practices and how people see it and things like that and I used to just pray in front of my colleagues it was normal yani. I never ever thought of it so this is London this is London okay this is St Albans right this is central we're in London sure. we're used to seeing different characters different backgrounds I went outside London to the Midlands and I worked there for quite some time I found it difficult because I was the only, you know, Arab looking person. And at the time there was a lot of the Arab spring going on and, you know, there's Muslims were being shown in a certain, as always, portrayed in a certain image in the media. And over there, there were pro protests against Muslims in that area. So, and in the same company that I worked at, their turnover was very, very low, which meant that the people that worked there were quite old. And it was very difficult for some, for them to accept a new person, let alone someone from a different background. background. When you say turnover, you don't mean financial turnover. No, I mean staff turnover. Okay. Sorry. Um, now, I found it difficult, and obviously I was a lot younger at the time. Um, I found it difficult to tell them I'm, I'm Muslim and I need a place to pray. Mm. For three months, I used to take a taxi from my workplace, wow. go home, pray, take a taxi, come back. Because I, I didn't know what to say to them. And I didn't want to have any sort of tension with them. Within three months, it was Christmas. I came to have, I'm going to come back to the three months, right? I came to have their Christmas snacks. And I gave everyone cards, their Christmas cards, as always. Um, and before I put, put my hand on something, my colleague hit my hand. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm just going to have this. He's like, no, no, we got you vegetarian stuff. Because we know you don't eat. This is not halal. I was so happy, and then it made me reflect upon it. Imam Sadiq says, um, kamila. The ref An hour of reflection is better than the worshipping of a whole year. That's wow. salah, psalm, wow. zakat, hajj, all of it. One hour of reflection. I reflected upon this, and I thought, what did I do throughout the three months that made this person hit my hand and tell me this is not halal and get me vegetarian 
snacks without me knowing. Accommodating you, basically. I thought about it. I, was, I, I started noticing things that I did without me realizing, which falls into the another hadith by Imam al-Sadiq where he says, Kunu du'atan lana al-sinatikum. Be a method of invitation towards us without your tongues. So I realized that without me verbally saying I am Muslim, without me saying to my uh, line manager that I want to pray, they understood it. Reason being is because for that period, I may have you know, um, said to them that, oh, I can't go to this place unless it's vegetarian. Um, when we t discuss um, you know, s issues in the media, the political issues, you know, I was, maybe I was neutral. Maybe I didn't say Muslims are all right and I wasn't so firm about it. And I showed them you know, how we were oppressed in certain areas and how the media treated us. And at the end of the day, they accepted me. And by the end of my contract there, what happened was they stopped inviting me to these kind of environments because they accepted the fact that, yeah, he's Muslim, but that's secondary. To them, they saw it secondary. The reason why they didn't invite me is because they knew that this is against my principles. So during that period, honestly, being away from London, I managed to define my principles. It was very difficult. It was very, very difficult. And it was a turning point in my life because I could have, you know, no one's there. My family's not there. My friends are not there. The society is, no one's there to see me, you know. And I'm sharing with people, by the way. I was sharing a place of, with a few people. They even used to do their thing and not even invite me. So you actually so they accepted it. introduced yourself yes. without even knowing. Sorry, this whole experience that I just mentioned falls into this hadith of Imam al-Sadiq of be those who invite people towards us without your tongues. But subhanAllah, without realizing, it fell into that category. So my approach, honestly, bro, as a, you know, as your friend, I'd say take the indirect approach, you know, um, throughout the whole of your stay at work. You know, I say to myself as well, um, don't come up front and, you know, I'm Muslim. Sure. You were already portrayed in a certain way and we need to change that. And the way to change that is by, you know, oh, showing them our character, <laughs> showing them our character and then after that showing them our religion because maybe they might, they might even get curious to know what religion you're from after. You know, I hope that helps. You, you've actually highlighted uh, quite a really good snippets uh, from the Quran and obviously the Hadith from the Imams as well. And I think you actually materialized what was being discussed in that Hadith. You know, you've actually lived it, what the Imam was trying to say. You've indirectly communicated yeah. without even knowing You've introduced yourself. But can I just make a point though? Uh, Sayyid Hadi's uh, experience would be a bit different than yours because some of what he said to me felt like he had to play the taqiyya card. Because if you're going to a village like that where you what feel I mean, unsafe, it took him six people months. are doing. Uh, Did you feel unsafe though, bro? Did you people feel people like doing, you were in uh, danger in any way, shape, or form? Protest anti Muslim or something like that? Sure, of course you don't want to. It's not taqiyya. So what is it then? And it's not being scared. It's knowing how to make these people have a positive impression about my religion without me making them have that but impression. But say that you had to take a taxi verbally. to go and pray at home. Yes. That, that seems is, a bit excessive. Because that by is excessive. Maybe, maybe if I add one more point, after the three months, I, I was able to tell them, and no, I need to start praying in the office. And by all means... And why couldn't you do that from the beginning? Because they have never seen anyone like us. <laughs> They've never experienced that. They're Bro, fresh. Can I, be, can I, just tell you I was going to say, they're I, fresh to the game. Had, had your boss seen a guy pray before you? Probably. London, somewhere. outside Midlands. Outside London. Outside London. London. Outside London. Why, yeah. why did he ask Maybe you to wear something weird? Because obviously they know there's different types of Muslims, right? There you've got yeah. all kind of type of Muslim. But in your case, I think it's different because you were there three months and they kind of it clicked in their head. He's been there for four years. Yeah. And if they still haven't kind of found out or realized that, hold on, this guy doesn't drink. Yeah. Let's not invite him or let us tell him from the start there's going to be alcohol served bro are you sure you want to come say hadi's made this point make your make your point life. make your yeah. point. i think i want to know what your point is i think you should just tell yeah. them yeah don't tell them i'm muslim like he said it yeah. or like say Ali said it i like, didn't say i'm muslim don't say them say i'm that. muslim say them i'm muslim jelly good hey i love you <laughs> tell them listen you know i appreciate the invite 
but you know, I don't think it's gonna work for me. I don't drink, guys, you know, I'm not gonna be drinking there. I'm gonna be, you know, just sitting there looking at you guys. I don't wanna ruin it for you guys. So maybe, you know, I'll come with you if you go to a restaurant, for instance, and then the after party, um, I'm gonna head off home or something like that. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Right, right before, obviously, I'm gonna answer because, that. Sorry, just, and just, I'm just gonna one tell thing. you what I will be doing. No, but just one thing, because well, this is not gonna be the first time they invite you. You've been no. there for, it's gonna be more days coming after Yeah, that. there's been all sorts you. of invites. Exactly. Left and right so what are you gonna do then? Verbally, what have you? Because you got so close to this guy, he's... Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. Now, um, I can tell him, you know, we're on a level. I can tell him, bro. It's nice, you know. You know, and he actually would realize when he's talking to me that, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, I didn't really think about this. And I know he didn't, because I know him. He was just, he's just happy to have this little event, you know, done and what have you. Um, and I can just excuse fun. myself. And he's not going to take it the wrong way. I know the guy, so he knows problem? me. The problem is that maybe I wasn't able to explain this properly. It's me. I do want to go. So I do want to go. And hmm. I feel like guys, I'm not enjoying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take him out. <laughs> I'm going to take you out somewhere nice. No, we'll it's have fun. not that. Like, if I'm you really want to go out. I go with all sorts of people. You're not your boy. Go back to Pakistan. <laughs> Ali, I, th Ali, I think I'm not going to elaborate much I'm just gonna say it goes back to defining your identity and defining your foundations sure. why do you want to go can I just say. can I just ask you why do you want to go because to have a laugh at the very least I know these guys I want to see them outside what a good of a bunch. Work you can have a laugh of us and I, know I can. and I do and I have my own little s clusters or circles of friends and this is a different circle of my friend and how come mm. I can, I'm not allowed to enjoy with them? Why don't you bring them into your life rather than you going well, to Well, we've life. done that from time to time. Obviously, what, lunchtime, we went to the only halal, you know, chicken shop there is, you know, near near me. And But we're so limited, you know what I mean? And and that's not the greatest of Brother, chicken don't, shops, don't, basically. Don't, 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 don't feel... <laughs> is this part during lunchtime? It's a feeling. Under pressure, don't, don't feel like you have to conform. And to be honest, I think there's a problem with integrating... Uh, it, it has its limits at the end of the day There's no problem with being British and Muslim But not everything that as Sayyid Hadi was alluding to earlier You have the right to do, you should do Because even to be honest, let's be honest Iraq in the 70s, if you were in Baghdad mm. You know what I mean? Very easy to find a club or anything like that And you can do that and it's your right And no one would say no, you know what I mean? And in Najaf you can't wear a t-shirt like that uh, but, <laughs> Back but, then But you know what I mean? You Honestly can't, you, It doesn't mean you should Luckily, we're not in that job. <laughs> Brother, don't, nice don't, 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 feel, <laughs> don't feel like you're missing anything out. At the end of the day, you know what? You have something beautiful that most people wish they had, which is your faith. And to be honest, people who hold on to their faith, especially in countries like that, like this, are like those who hold on to a piece of um, coal, hot, coal. hot coal. All right? And just always remember that in your heart. And don't, don't ever feel under pressure. Look, we're in an understanding society, number one. And number two, we define ourselves. You've got the most beautiful thing in your heart, which is Wilayat Amir Mu'mini alayhi salam. And you don't want to sell that for a laugh. Yeah. You want to sell that for a laugh. You go to the cinema with your wife and you watch a comedy. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I have to say to you, brother, <laughs> okay? You'll make the right choice, I'm sure you will. No, no, of course. I And you guys have been you know, really helpful in that regard. And it was all about integration, wasn't it, at the end of the day? And I'll be very honest with you. I think there's absolutely no difference between how we Muslims condu conduct our affairs um, as compared to the constitution of the UK. What is the, the core principles? What is it? I mean, it's, uh, freedom. it's freedom, freedom of speech, there's uh, tolerance for people who are different, yeah. different that have different values, etc. Yeah. There's a law of the land which you have to abide by. I don't know why certain, you know, parts of Muslims areas or whatever they don't understand because that they yet. They don't understand the law, but that's down to ignorance. <laughs> that's the truth. Nor do they understand <laughs> Islam. If you read, <laughs> <That's a good laughs> <one>. <laughs> if you read in the bylaws and the constitution of what the what the British <laughs> constitution is trying to say. Brother. It's not very much different from let what Islam is trying to say. So, of course, you can Let integrate. me nip it in the bud for you. Let me nip it in the bud Do for it, you, buddy. for all of us. Because, to be honest, this tea is cold. And <laughs> Fire I'm gonna up help, the I'm, mic, say. I'm going to help you guys Fire out. Fire up. Our brother wants a laugh. Let's go watch a comedy right Let's now. Do that. Let's go. That's all right. Let's do it. <laughs> Give me some of that tea before it's we finished, go. It's done. It's oh, cold and it's man. finished. <laughs> anyway, listen. I want to know more about uh, Hadi Gubanchi's Christmas party. So, what was it that you wanted to eat, eh? What was the haram one that you put yeah. your hands on? Sausage 
<laughs> ah, he likes it, doesn't he? He loves it. <laughs> How did you not know that that was haram? Did it say turkey sausage? I didn't know, bro. Why I thought it was vegetarian. Sausage? Did you really? Did you no, because really? it looked like a samosa. You were taking a taxi to go and pray and you thought the sausage was vegetarian. <laughs> this guy's full of it, anyway. <laughs> there you go, that's your love. That's it. <laughs> just don't do what I do. No, if you do, just don't tell me. It's fine. <laughs>